They say they were convicted of no crime. Still, police came into their homes and took all of their valuable belongings. Well, now as 7 Action News reporter Kim Russo tells us, one lawmaker is pushing for change. You've seen the movies. Police seize the stuff of crime bosses to stop a network of criminals. But could it happen to the average person? Defense attorneys say it's happening all the time, especially to medical marijuana patients. This is video recorded by the office of attorney Michael Camorn, who's also the president of the Michigan Medical Marijuana Association. He says it shows stuff seized from his clients and held by police. His clients paid him thousands to represent them and after years of waiting, got their belongings back. Why is the state engaged in this kind of activity? It allows law enforcement and actually benefits everybody to remove the profit motive from the drug dealing. Police will tell you they only see stuff they truly believe is connected to crimes. But often people are never charged with a crime or their belongings are kept even after charges are dropped. I did not get bound over by the judge in St. Clair County, yet they still have my stuff. Jennifer Hensey testified before state lawmakers in 2015 that she has multiple sclerosis and is a medical marijuana patient. She said even after a judge cleared her of any crime, the prosecutor fought to keep her valuables. Lawmakers changed the law to raise the burden of proof, but people are still voicing complaints. I felt robbed. Oh yeah, like a highway robbery. They want money. Ron Hammond and his son John say they believe it is all about making money for law enforcement. When medical marijuana became legal, they applied for cards to be caregivers and patients. Well, I thought everything was legal. Everything that you're supposed to do, I followed all the weights and all the counts and everything like that, but it doesn't matter to them when they come in. They just take everything and say, gotcha. They say about three years ago, police seized all their valuables. They say about two years later, only when they came close to winning their belongings back, were they charged with manufacturing marijuana. The Wayne County Prosecutor's Office released a statement saying the charges came independently and that the Hamans had more than allowed 20 pounds of marijuana. But their attorney says there are pictures. He says that weight includes stocks, garbage, and unusable wet leaves, which shouldn't be included. Interestingly, the Hamans say some of the things seized have nothing to do with marijuana. They say police seized their 401ks, which they contributed to through their jobs at a home remodeling company. Police told them they could because the money was from drugs. I don't understand it at all. It's it's on my pay stub. It shows where my money comes from. It's that all goes in there. It's all legal. All the money is traceable from his proceeds from his job right into his 401k. There is no logic or reason why the police have to go ahead and do what they're doing, but they have the right to do it under current state law. Representative Peter Lucido has introduced House Bill 4158. He says police all too often seize property from the innocent. Taking a look at the numbers, the state's asset forfeiture report says in 2016, police seized more than $15 million in property. In about 10% of those cases, no one was charged. Lucido wants the law changed so that police would only be able to keep your stuff if there is a conviction, forcing police to at least charge people in order to get their belongings. They have a right to seize it, put it in the evidence bank account or the evidence locker, then develop their case. But if they don't, what did the person do wrong under the law? Law enforcement leaders say if someone wants to get their stuff back, all they have to do is answer questions. One of the things that you have to do in a civil case, which you do not have to do in a criminal case, is you have to answer questions. It puts people in a tough spot if those proceeds are from this, uh, an illegal activity. The idea that the government just takes it and by the fact that they're possessing it, it becomes theirs and the burden shifts to the owner of it to prove that the property is not guilty or that they acquired it in a lawful way is against the grain of what we've learned and what citizens expect from our legal system. Michael Camorn argues it hurts justice. He says he takes on clients who can't afford his services because their assets are seized. John and Ron Hammond say they believe they will be found not guilty, but in the meantime, they are being punished. We played by your rules. Just my life up. Representative Peter Lucido will get a chance to make his case that this law should be changed during a hearing in Lansing next week. Kim Russell, 7 Action News. And you know Kim will stay.